Kiev sends top has declared war on the Ukrainian Orthodox Church by bell, book and candle. Broadcasters have launched a large-scale propaganda battle, unlike before when they just manipulated people's consciousness, furnishing the information from the required angle. Currently, one plus one campaigners have been mainstreaming flagrant lies into devoted ears of their viewers. With every new video plot of the channel, it gets even more detached from the objective reality. In order not to sound precarious, let's sort out the latest TSN video plots being churned out nearly every day. To be reminded, they foment conflict between the UOC and the Ministry of Culture. UOC MP even filed a suit against Ukraine because the ministry refuses to recognize a Moscow version of church statutes. The church sued civil servants for they refused to fulfill their direct duties, namely to register charters of UOC monasteries and yeparchies. The ministry's reps did not even turn up at the court session on this matter. Such behavior is common for those who have no reasons for their position. Consideration of this address has lasted for a year and a half. Therefore, actions of the UOC on challenging inaction of the Ministry of Culture are absolutely fair and lawful. Heads up! Here it is TSM being a part of One Plus One channel, the biggest broadcaster of Ukraine with a powerful impact on the minds of Ukrainians. It is the one to set up about to win over public opinion in favor of functionaries. How to do it? Well, it's a piece of cake. To broadcast falsehood, if to put it diplomatically, or merely to tell lies in plain language. Upon that, they don't bother to come up with new ideas, and the same bullet points keep roaming from one plot to another. Now we will show you how TSN cheats its viewers and what is actually true. Well, point one, taken from previous plots. UOC wants to compel the Ministry of Culture to change charters for its denomination. Priests want to make the Ministry of Culture change provisions of charters for their church. The truth is simple. UOC charters have never changed over the whole period of the existence of Ukraine. Those charters are standard and have been used for many years. We make corrections only in accordance with the tax code requirements. But we do not change the structure of the charter itself. Point 2 taken from previous plots. UOC filed a suit not against the functionaries who neglect their direct duties, but against the state of Ukraine. AMP goes into litigation with the state of Ukraine. This psychological trick is unsophisticated but rather effective. An idea is broadcast into a subconscious level. Evil Church of Moscow Patriarchate, remember, wants to offend not an abstract ministry of culture, but each of us. But no one is going to tell you about the fact that it's common for citizens all over the world to file a suit against state organizations. This is not a practice of Ukraine. This is an international practice to challenge unlawful actions of state bodies in courts. If the UOC lodged a complaint with the European Court for Human Rights, then the state of Ukraine would be a defendant. In this case, we have a central executive body as a defendant. Point 3. Taken from previous plots. UOC tries to make certain amendments into its charters, which will turn Orthodox parishioners into the slaves of yeparchies and archpriests. To turn people into real slaves, Ukraine is against to have parishioners bonded. This idea was intensively promoted by Alexander Sagan, who used to run the religious department, but at that time it was called State Committee, not the department. In fact, we can speak about a new service of believers. However, nobody bothered to say that Mr. Sagan, when leading the State Committee, felt at ease to register the UOC charters being totally identical with the present ones. Before, he did not see any signs of servitude at all, did he? He says our charters impose servage. However, absolutely the same charters are signed by this person. Point 4. Taken from previous plots. 
UOC tries to have hegemony over parishes, like we can see it in totalitarian Russia. To turn a fairly democratic structure into totalitarian dictate of one confession, like in Russia, decided to live by Russian rules, by Russian templates. The most interesting thing is that UOC charters have been the same for many years. They are identical to those used by the Kiev Patriarchate or Greek Catholics. Yet in TSN's version, the UOC is building the Russian hegemony. The Ministry of Culture is guided by double standards. Hierarchical subordination is retained in many religious organizations, but only the UOC should not have it. There must be certain democracy and parishes must be separated from eparchies for some reason. Point five. UOC wants to create special anti-national charters. This statement is voiced by Andrei Yurash, head of the Department on Religion of the Ministry of Culture. There is a desire to build a structure that will act under different schemes and mechanisms compared with all the other religious organizations of Ukraine. Head of the UOC press service, Bishop Clement, in his letter to general director of One Plus One Channel Tkachenko, calls these words said by Yurash as an outspoken lie and explains why. The UOC structure has not changed since the independence of Ukraine was proclaimed. All other confessions in Ukraine have in exactly the same structure. Point 6. UOC is preparing for total privatization of parishes' property. All the property has to be officially re-registered from the parish property into the property of Moscow priests. It is carrying out total privatization of the property, money, churches. The same Bishop Clement in his official letter to Tkachenko affirms this is conscious slander, since all corrections into charters are made upon the tax agent's requirements, and there is not a single provision there about property privatization. All this TSN produced falsehood wanders from one plot to another. But holy hell, there is something new. Heads up, everybody! Upon the request of clergymen, the court started a written proceeding. Upon the request of clergymen, the court started a written proceeding. In fact, judges themselves took a decision to start a written proceeding, and the church has nothing to do with it at all. Current legislation of Ukraine in the above case is a code of administrative legal proceedings, which forces this manner of handling a suit in the event of absence of the parties. Further on, TSN switches to personalities of judges and put on them their brandished dirty jacket. An odious district administrative court of Kiev, who judges Ukraine on its behalf. Very ambiguous judges, well known for their pro-Russian position. One of them got divorced with his wife fictitiously. Another has a big house and expensive cars. The third dared condemn seizure of administrative buildings and killing of the police during Euromaidan, but the main thing – he did fly to Athos. He called this pilgrimage a piety. This is a piety. You will ask why TSN showers judges in lies and criticizes the changed format of litigation. It is simple. Coordinators of this process merely have a clear-cut strategy and tactics. At the moment, TSN is actively shaping the required public opinion. Here we are, a hostile church, remember of the Moscow Patriarchate, insidiously demands that a patriotic Ministry of Culture should register charters which are harmful for Ukraine. They are laying a foundation in order not to comply with court rulings and say they are illegitimate. The next stage is when radicals from Azov right sector come to court sessions and compel the judges using familiar TSN thesis to make the required decision. Everybody knows how effective such tactics in Ukraine, including in church-related matters, is. It is enough to remember in what way militants from Azov forced the deputies from Odessa region to allocate the land for Kiev Patriarchate.
You won't leave until this law has been adopted, you have my word. If you want to have a conflict with us, you will see the entire Azov battalion, clear or not. Nobody even think about the fact that above tears and plots with ridiculous blackmailing of judges is an evident pressure on them, though such actions are subject to particular liability within the law. A criminal liability is foreseen in case of influencing the court by any means to compel it to make the required decision. This is Article 376 of the Criminal Code of Ukraine. I think criticism of the judges by mass media in this case, aimed at binding them to take a certain decision, is a way to impose an influence on the court. We have already said that it is the Ministry of Culture that wants to compel the OC to destroy hierarchical links between its yapakis and parishes, so that it could smoothly transfer UOC parishes to other confessions at a legislative level. Kiev Patriarchate in the first line. A community has a law-based right to pass from the Moscow Patriarchy to the Kiev Patriarchate. For that end, specialists have elaborated draft laws 4128 and 4111 and are working out others. We have done a framework of Bill 4928 at the Expert Council being actively discussed at present. It is about simplification of transferring parishes from one jurisdiction to another. We have offered a particular mechanism. Of course, it is clear to everybody in this far-reaching match game, TSN staff are not even chess pieces, but just dust on the chessboard. It's easy to guess they are moved by several important figures, the match being supervised by the certain coffee holic Mogon. Chess pieces apparently strive to redraw a confessional map of Ukraine. The UOC press service has made six appeals over the last two years to the One Plus One administration demanding to stop continual floods of lies and manipulations towards the UOC, yet it resulted in churning out new, even more deceitful TSN plots. Isn't it high time the UOC remembered it has not only duties before the state but also rights, including the right to pursue apology and refutation of the false information against the Church judiciary? The Ukrainian Orthodox Church has all grounds for such an appeal and prospects to oblige the channel to refute this information as false. In 1917, the October Revolution took place, entailing the destruction of Orthodox temples, which was considered as a norm, while the newspapers were screaming that religion is an evil. Now, 100 years later, court mass media are engaged in the same propaganda against the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. Even though the state has not yet begun to pull down temples, an average Orthodox believer is not certain whether he will be able to enter a church for praying.